everyone. Glad to have you today. This is a fun topic for me. I've been in the midst of many submissions and work with the, the CTD format for a while. The CTD format is really the same, whether it's electronic or paper, for, except for some very small differences, which we'll talk about today. So let's get started. This is what we're going to cover. We're going to describe the common technical document and how it, why it came into existence. I'll talk to you about the Common Technical Document, Basic Tools for Electronic Implementation of the CTD. We're going to talk about style guides, why this, it's important for implementation in your documents in the CTD, and then we're going to map the contents of the traditional IND to the CTD format. For those of you that are familiar with the old IND, they're different, but the information's the same. It's just presented a little differently. So why did we go with a Common Technical Document? About 20 years ago, the pharmaceutical industry globally determined there was a need for standardized format for global studies and submissions. And for those of you who weren't around then, I was, so I can tell you, anytime you did a submission that was given to more than one regulatory agency, everything was completely different. So submissions are pretty hectic as it is. To try and do a different submission for every country is almost Herculean. So this was a great thing that happened. It was designed to produce one single set of technical documents. So the requirements is a single set of requirements for the registration of any new drug product. It streamlines the development process, significantly reduces industry preparation time for any global submissions. And as you probably know, global is really the way it is going now. There, you know, used to be we did a lot of stuff in the U.S. and some stuff globally. Now it's pretty much everything is global. Consistent reviews are provided because the documents are fairly similar or almost the same across the entire submission process. And it really facilitates the electronic submission, sub submission process, which as you also probably know is pretty standard now as well. So a, a group was formed called the International Conference on Harmonization. It was comprised of regulatory authorities in the EU, Japan, the US, and experts all over the globe. Most countries follow ICH. Interestingly enough, Japan still has a very different philosophy in how they present their documents, although they still use the CTD headers and they present the same documents, but they do handle them somewhat differently. And if you want to talk about the countries that follow ICH GCP guidelines, right now I believe there are 28. So this is a list of them if you're at all interested. These are all the ones that follow it. I'm sorry, I'm thinking about the EU, not the CTD. <laughs> there are a lot of countries that follow the CTD. Okay, so let's talk about just a little overview of the CTD, and we're going to go into the CTD itself before we really get into the different parts of it. So the one thing that's really great about the CTD is it's modular. It's very, everything is divided into different modules that have to do with three different phases of clinical development. It has to do with the drug itself, it has to do with the non-clinical development, and then clinical development. It's very organized and it's very standardized, but the standardization makes it inflexible. So there are things that you cannot change and we'll go through that. So the thing that's important to know is that the CTD or common technical document applies to format only. You're still submitting an IND or an IDE if you're using it for devices or the same marketing application. It's still going to be an NDA, a BLA, or an MAA, okay? It's just that the names and location of the information changes. You still have to follow all the regulations and you're still providing the same information. It's just where you put it is what's the biggest difference. All guidance documents apply, so you have to make sure that you're up to date with the guidances. So the whole CTD was developed by the EMA for Europe, the FDA in US, the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare in Japan, and it's maintained by the International Conference on Harmonization. It is the required format in the US, EU, Japan, Canada, and Australia. It's designed to allow for all documents to be included over the life cycle of the submission. It's much more, it flows much more than we're used to with the previous formatting, and especially for an IND because it starts to build your whole submission over time. It's gonna start with your IND and you're gonna keep building and building and building, especially if you're doing it electronically. The electronic version allows for initial versions to be inputted into the gateway or wherever you're submitting, and then amended versions of those documents which will supersede the previously submitted documents. 
for an initial IND, only certain sections of the CTD are going to be used. And so those are the ones we're going to talk about primarily today because we're talking about the IND. We're not specifically talking about the whole CTD in general, although we will go over the CTD. You must use their numbering. This is one thing that is very inflexible, as I talked about before. So you can't add in additional numbering. You can add in additional subheadings, but the original headings that are pre-specified in the guidance documents are the headings you need to use. You can't use, you can't delete sections. So if you're not using them in the IND at that point, you have to note that no information is available for those sections at this time. And another thing that's sort of very inflexible about the CTD is typically headers longer than level five are not recommended. So that means four decimal points, five numerals. So what people tend to do is in the header, they put the initial numbering of the document. So let's say it's module 2.7.3, that's in the header. Then you start your document with one so that you can go out to level five headings and still maintain format that you need. Now I have worked with clients that will include 273 in every section. It does mean your level headers go out much longer than level five, which is not recommended, although that is not something that will have you held back. 